the bottom of the drawer two paper clips. Paper clips in the egg? No. Oh. It has candy in it. It does. Oh, yes. good. <gasps> okay, now we're, we're live. Okay. I was just about to warn them all that you were just setting okay. things up. Yes, now we're live. Oh. Yeah, this is way better than your googly eyes that we found earlier. That's a lie. Yeah, that's probably a lie. But <laughs> Aww, I did really need candy right now. Uh, paper clips. Um, Hello. Thrill House is here. Hello. We're here. Okay, now it's yeah, now it's actually here. started. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm a very, a very tired cat. That's me. I'm watching the ad first, actually. But no, you're here. Okay. Well, the the ad is is playing. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another special stream. All right, we're just getting started. We're get we're getting started. We're getting started. We're getting started. All right, so. Um, hello everyone. I'm Pat, and this is Rachel. I'm just finished watching a Hardy bed. This is Charles, and over there is Sam and Emily. We're all here for you. Hello. Hi. <laughs> yes, Jay. Does anybody it's, have any it's paper us. clips in their drawer? Um, Why would I have paper clips? How does it have drawers? He only has a computer. Because it's an office supply, and we are an office. Why would I have paper clips? I, I we're not eggs. here for paper, we're here for Photoshop. I just have eggs with no googly eyes or paper clips. Nice. We're here for Photoshop. Okay. We're, learn how, we're learning how to Photoshop. How to Photoshop. Okay, so um, I have heard from um, at least several people, maybe more, um, that. Um, for those of you starting out getting into digital art, um, you would totally be interested in seeing how we at Squishy HQ do it. Um, and also, I've been using Photoshop for a number of years and can show you all the tricks and tips and things that I've learned. Um, because it is a, a very daunting program. Um, listen, hello, Bill. Oh, thanks for joining us. Mega Lego, yes. Ever, all the gang, okay, the gang's all here. Cool, we can start. So, um, I have my little notes up next to my screen, so I can I can go through. Um, right, so we are but we are going to be doing mostly Photoshop here, um, but Photoshop is a very expensive program. Um, so, if you guys are watching this with the intention of just sort of like um, putting your toes in the water. Um, I have some recommendations um, for good um, good things to start. So we got zoop, these guys. Um, all these are mostly for the PC, um, except I think Sketchbook is Sketchbook Pro is tablet based. I don't know, but Coral Painter, Clip Studio Paint. Um, I use that one all the time actually. Paint Tool Sci. Um, there's also Art Rage. These are all like good. Some of them are free, some of them have trials, some of them you have to pay for, but all of them are options because the most recent version of Photoshop um, is the Creative Cloud, which you have to pay for monthly, which is a barrier to, um, to some, which is totally understandable because if you're not even sure if you know, digital art is something that you want to do, it's kind of hard to justify, you know, what is it, 40 bucks a month? I think you can just get Photoshop for 20, but whatever. Um, so, Actually, Clip Studio Paint is very good. Highly recommended. Um, so we're going to go through stuff that you can do, um, make art with on the computer. First and foremost, you're going to want one of these guys. Zoop. Oh, Thrill House did make a good uh, Ooh. point that if you're a student, there is a discount for yes. Photoshop and among other things. Actually, there's probably a, there's probably a discount for everything if and you're a student. And there is a free um, trial for that as well. Um, you can if if you still have a, a school email address, you can get a lot of stuff for free. 
Um, but this is um, this is another um, piece of equipment that you need that's actually physical. We use um, tablets at Squishable, and pretty much every um, digital artist I know uses a tablet. Tablet, which is to say, not the iPad, but the um, this. Um, the you can get actually a lot of different. There are more sort of like alternative brand um, tablets, but I've used Wacom or Wacom. I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, for a number of years, um, and they are very reliable. Even though they're probably a little bit more expensive, um, the the sort of like entry level models, the Intuos and Bamboo models are um, very. Um, economical and they're also a good way to sort of get your um, foot in the stream of metaphorical art. Is that a show? Yes, this is um, this is uh, an Intuos Pro. This is the fourth generation, I think, of the named Intuos Pros. Um, that's this guy. The this is the most recent one. Um, Oh no, the follow channel says, says we're offline. Uh, uh, I, well then, whatever, I don't know. Um, so if you have a piece of software and you have a tablet, then you're ready to go. Wow. Wow. It can't be that easy. <laughs> um, oh, hi, Jenna. <laughs> yeah, why aren't we all having issues? It's, I couldn't get I couldn't get the stream key to work for five minutes, so. Um, yeah, Jenna makes an all, a very good point. You can get a lot of the physical, like you can get a tablet for um, cheap used, and you can also, if you already have an iPad or um, a Samsung tablet that you use not for art and want to try it out, um, there are styluses that you can get, some better than others, some have the pressure sensitivity, some don't. Um, that you can try. It's not quite as good as on a computer, on you know, like maybe Photoshop, but um, the Autodesk Sketchbook program is really good, and it's it's also a nice way to like introduce yourself to it. Procreate, Procreate is excellent. Yeah, um, and it's and it's only what is it? It's like five dollars, six dollars. Yeah, really cheap. Um. So. Uh, so yes, so that is that is the stuff that you're gonna need to invest in, which is um, you know sort of tough to start out, but it's sort of like buying art supplies. Like you're not buying a pencil set and erasers and paper and um, sharpeners and stuff. You're buying a, um, a you know a software and a tablet, which is maybe more upfront, but then you don't ever need to buy pencils. Although you probably will, because then you're gonna want a sketchbook and then you're gonna want blah blah blah. Uh, <laughs> um. Also, Thrillhouse makes a, a decent point um, for Photoshop, especially. Um, it it is a demanding piece of software, so uh, something a little bit less dense, like paint tool size, really light and really easy to use on any computer. Um, yeah, <laughs> Bill, a, a dumb stylus. It's sort of uh, one that isn't responsive. It's just something that you're you're not using your finger. Not using your finger is probably the most important part because. The, the the ergonomics of using a pen sort of like trains your muscle memory that in ways that trying to do it without one is going to be super tough doing. Um, so that's all the basic stuff. That's the the prep. Um, so Photoshop. This is this is Photoshop. This is um, th and then the rest of the stream is probably going to focus on Photoshop because that's. The program that I use every day and um, is sort of like the the mecca of of things that you can do. Um, that being said, it's not perfect, especially for doing um, illustration. It's sort of like you you can do illustration in it because it is so all encompassing. Whereas if you do something like Clip Studio Paint or um, Sketchbook Pro, those are programs that are specifically made to draw on. So they're like um, a little bit less intensive um, and a little bit easier, I think, to understand. There's not as much hidden. Um, like, I, I have also the tools of Photoshop, um, and <laughs> this is all um, tucked away in this little toolbar over here. Um, so you, with with lighter programs, quote unquote, you're not going to have so much hidden. 
um, which is both um, a blessing and a curse because sometimes it, the ver there's one specific tool that is going to make your life ten times easier. You just find it like buried underneath the text tool or something. I don't know. Um, so I don't use um, I don't use all of these uh, every day. I think, and the ones that we're going to be focusing on, at least I'm going to be focusing on in the next two hours. Um, is a brush tool, boop, and um, the eraser, boop, and the gradient, boop, and marquee, and the lasso. Uh, let's see, these guys, probably this guy, <laughs> this gal. <laughs> um, <laughs> boop, boop. I probably use like I probably use, probably use half the tools on a somewhat regular basis, um, but um, that's not to say that all of them aren't useful. <laughs> lasso, <laughs> the, yes, the squish, but the lasso is is the classic. You can do you can do all your memory with the lasso tool. Like, are you drawing with lasso tool? And I'm like, what? Um. So what? The basic navigation of Photoshop is um, something that's very similar across platforms. Um, there's the hand tool, which is the um, the way that you kind of navigate the the canvas. You can pan. Um, it's like the, an easier way of using the scroll bars. Um, but it's worth noting weird things about the hand tool. If I have my canvas not zoomed in at all, I can't use it which is sort of annoying when I want to have the corner of the canvas in the middle. Um, if you make Photoshop full screen, which you do by pressing F, um, then you can move the canvas wherever you want. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how I came to this conclusion, um, but it took me a very long time and I was very happy to know it when it did. Um, so that's good um, when you're using when you're drawing something and you kind of like want to shift the canvas around like a piece of paper it's um, impossible to do when you're not full screen so note that um, other than the hand tool which the shortcut is spacebar um, I'll try and make note of all the um, shortcuts that I use because they make your life a hundred thousand times easier um, so hold down space you can use the hand tool if you hold down space and you hold down control you switch to the zoom tool. And what's happening with this is scrubby zoom. Scrubby zoom is your best friend. Um, because if you don't do a scrubby zoom, it does um, a full oh, I never um, segmented. Why aren't you scrubby zoom, Rachel? <laughs> I just hit all of them fast. <sighs> you're a monster, and you're undermining my lesson. <laughs> if I use scrubby zoom, then I end up at like 28.3 or something, and then I get annoyed. Okay, well, if you're if you don't need to be zoomed into your canvas at one very specific number, um, then you should do scrubby zoom. The the problem with scrubby zoom is that it's not automatically on by default um, on some computers, because it uses your graphics processor. This is a good time to go into the preferences, <laughs> because this is why you come to cool, fun Twitch streams. Go into system preferences of Photoshop. Um, I think it's K. Control K, where is preferences? There it is. Um, and you're going to find all this in preferences and performance. Um, right now, it's using my graphics processor. You put this little check mark here. I wish that I had a way to zoom in the thing, but I don't, so we're going to have to deal with it. Um, if this is checked off, then the tool will work. It, it says in the little description, um, it allows the rotate tool to function, scrubby zoom, um, the sampling ring, which um, lets you preview a color that you're picking, um, a whole bunch of other stuff. It's, it's, your, your life is going to be made a lot easier if you can use a graphics processor um, with Photoshop. So scrubby zoom, okay, last, last navigation tool um, to keep in mind is the rotate tool which is R on the keyboard. Um, and I think it's buried under the hand tool. Yeah. 
um, rotate tool is something that I do um, on the streams that I'm sure you've seen that I'm worried will give everyone headaches because um, you can pinwheel uh, the canvas without actually changing um, the orientation of it. So if you save like a, an image and you rotate the canvas 90 degrees to the left, it'll save it that way. If you rotate an image 90 degrees to the left with the rotate tool, then it doesn't. Um, and it's also very quick and easy. Um, it's probably yeah, <laughs> yeah, Bill. It's it's um, definitely uh, everyone uses these programs totally differently, which is really fascinating to me. Um, some people don't need the keyboard shortcuts at all, and they can navigate around fine. Um, but I slow down. 110% if I don't have like my little keyboard to the left of the tablet. Um, I think it's actually sort of an important note to, um, if you're using one of these um, programs to find a nice way to move around it, because um, the moment that you don't need to think about panning and zooming and changing tools and finding the things that you need, um, that's when you're actually going to be the most comfortable with whatever program you choose to use because the barrier between you and it will evaporate. You will become one with Photoshop. Um, so, you know, if I, if I want to go into this area of the canvas, um, you know, heart squishable, and I'm, I need to go mentally through the process of like, okay, going to the zoom tool and then clicking and then clicking and then clicking and switching to the hand tool and then panning and okay and then maybe I want to rotate the canvas like this I go then I, oh but it's not centered anymore back to the hand tool if you want to speed up you know your workflow learning maybe the like the three like the pan tool rotate and zoom learning those keyboard shortcuts is very handy because um, then I can just instead of doing all that say I have the brush out I can just quickly zoop and then zoop and it's very natural um, also a good practice is to have the, the navigator up but I, I'm not I don't have it up all the time so you know I can give out good advice and not follow it myself um, there um, I would say to not overwhelm yourself either because um, there are a lot of shortcuts. I could go down a line of shortcuts and say, you know, like Control Zero does this, and hold down Shift to do that. But just learning the basic ones and then building from there is is good. Um, and everybody, every artist uses different sets. Exactly. Of them. Like there are certainly ones that I do not use, and vice versa. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and me trying to do anything on past computer is. <laughs> Crazy, crazy mess. I don't know if anybody yeah. remembers that live stream, but well, it was a nightmare. I think maybe the second time we were, we did a live stream, Sam sat down at my computer to try and draw something on Photoshop and, and couldn't do it because because we had had such different um, workflows. Settings and yeah, workflows and plus your PC and iMac. Yeah. This is me every day switching between the two. Yeah, that's tough. I uh, applaud you for that. I come in and then I'm like, I'm hitting yeah. the control button again. Rachel, Rachel has a third entirely foreign workflow, so it, it's totally up to the person. Um, I can only, you know, show you all what I do, so take it with a grain of salt. Um, what other tools? What other tools that have weird functions? Um, oh, well, actually, one of my favorite things that I think this was the most recent Creative Cloud, I think the 2016 update actually. Um, yeah, yeah, Bill. Bill. Bill knows, Bill should be doing this stream. Bill should, you know, you shouldn't be look, listening to me. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and I, the, the, cav, the follow up to that is, um, you know, I think that it's great that this is happening on Twitch and you can chat with everyone and if you have any questions or if you want any, any clarification, like you know, put it in the chat, and send it to us in a PM on Facebook, um, all that stuff. Uh, because learning how other people work is a good way to nail down a workflow for yourself. Um, anyway, the the move tool, which is the top tool, um, it's the thing that lets you move your layers around. Um, so like, if I highlight the heart squishable layer, I can just move that independently of anything else 
great. Layers are your friend. Um, but they added, I, I don't know when they added this, but if you hold down control, you get to see all the smart guides. Um, and this is really, um, hey, Clucky. Um, this is, I think, such a big help because it lets you quickly assess where a piece of your art is on the canvas. And it also shows you where it is in relation to other things. Um, so if I have um, my cursor hovering over this layer, the Photoshop Digital Art Crash Course layer, it will show me um, distances between that layer and the layer that you're on, um, which is a lot of words. But um, it's a good, like, there's not a lot of good rulers in Photoshop, and uh, I find that it's a good way to assess um, like if something is centered, um, especially compared to, to another thing, like if your eyes, if you're drawing eyes and it's on a head and the head is on a separate layer, you can kind of quickly see where the eyes are in terms of pixels or inches um, compared to the head. Um, also, if you just control click on any layer with the move tool um, active, you select that layer and can move it, which is um, a way to speed yourself up if you're um, not a fan of going over to the right hand side on the layers panel and clicking one. Or if you're like me and you don't label your layers, <laughs> which is not, not a good right practice, now. please. I named my layers for the stream, even though I think they're a little bit too small to see. But um, OK, so I think that is what I want to go over in terms of the tools um, for like the move, basic movement navigation tools. Um, the rest of it is just sort of up to you guys to experiment. Um, <laughs> label your layers, love yourself. <laughs> no, it's layer 16 copy four that's yeah. nested in a folder called yeah. copy copy. Yeah, group Yeah. Yeah, that's that's my life. I'm so embarrassed whenever I give Photoshop documents to people. I try and spruce it up, and I always fail. <laughs> um, okay, so. Layers. This is a good time to talk about layers, because layers are weird. Um, layers um, are probably in going, are going to be in any art program that you use, um, and they're a very sort of key part of organizing yourself when you're doing a digital illustration. Um, so <laughs> layer make layer face. <laughs> um, here's some cool things that you can do with layers. Um, probably the biggest. Um, the biggest thing that Photoshop brings are, are clipping masks. Clipping masks, masks are an easy way um, to... Oh, I think Sam just destroyed herself. Oh my god. She's done. <laughs> okay. Every, everyone's fine. Um, so clipping masks are... Here's, here's a quick demonstration of clipping mask. I'm going to draw this blobby. And I'm going to make this blobby teal. And I'm going to um, put a blobby on, on top of that in another layer. That's Sam explosion. <laughs> and I'm going to make this blobby blue. Um, so these are two separate layers, two separate blobbies. And if I make a clipping mask, um, by going to the layer that's on top. So this would be the, the dark blue blob. And I right click and I say create clipping mask or there's a clipping mask button on the bottom. Boop. Um, the top layer will overlay on the bottom layer, um, which is very, very handy in almost every single way. Because um, I can, I can still move this. The two blobs are still distinct. I can move it over here. Now it's over it's squishable, um, and it is editable in and of itself. I, I can continue to draw. Um, so this is really cool. If in terms of if you're shading something, if you are trying to put, um, maybe like you're doing drawing a scene and you want to put art on a wall and not have it be um, breaking the plane of the wall. Um, so if, it, so if I have this layer one that I'm running my cursor over and I want to shade this blob um, and I don't want the shade to leave the blob, um, I can go and do that without fear of 
making a total mess of myself. Like, okay, well, this is, I mean, it's gonna be a mess, but see, that's like the shadow. If I release the clipping mask, then that is what I actually drew. I don't know if I'm, ex I'm explaining this right. Clipping masks are a little weird, but um, masking is um, one of Photoshop's selling points. It's uh, maybe the thing that I think made it such a big deal when it came out. Um, because it's not only clipping masks where you're combining two layers. Um, that's a good way to think about it. You're combining two layers into one. But there's also, also layer masks, which is basically a clipping mask without the top layer. Um, yeah, <laughs> with a dumb name. Um, so let's say that you have this blobby, and I do. I'm going to make this its own layer. If I can figure myself out here. So you have this blob on a layer. And I want to um, erase this part, right? Maybe this, this bit, mm, it's not doing it for me, but I'm not sure. If you create a layer mask, um, it creates this overlay that you can't see over your layer. Um, right now, it's this white square on the right-hand side of the um, thumbnail. That means that the entirety of the layer can be seen. Um, basically, white on that mask means that you can see what's on the layer, and black on that mask means that you can't see it. So the black is like hiding any of the pixels that are on the layer. So if I go in with a brush and I color in this layer mask black, then it makes my blobby vanish. If I go back and I color it in white, then it reappears, like magic, <laughs> because it's basically magic. Um, it gets interesting when you say color in gray, and part of the blobby vanishes. Maybe a darker gray and more of the blobby vanishes. Um, this masks and clipping masks are things that you could watch hour-long videos on um, to show like how artists use it in different ways, but just getting familiar with the terms and kind of knowing like baseline what you do. Um, what they do is a good way to um, is a good way to like open the door into understanding more in-depth tutorials. Um, yeah, throw house. That's exactly it. It's like putting a piece of paper over um, whatever it is that's on your layer. Um, and if you um, if you want to, you can put as as much as you know more of a stencil. You could make a, a very complicated array of papers to hide your drawing. Um, so that is a quick intro into into masks, and I'm I'm gonna try and keep I'm I'm just going over the surface. This is like basic uh, crash course level stuff, and so I'm sorry if I'm going fast. Um, obviously, if you if anyone has any questions, you can let me know. Um, but you know I, I'm trying to get to cover a breadth in terms of uh, as opposed to depth. Um, so we got layers. Um, I'm also trying to cover things that you're going to see in any art program that you use. So um, that's another thing. Um, okay, so layers. One more thing about layers um, that is really easy and not nearly as complicated as um, masks are the blending mode and the opacity. So let's bring back Blobby. This time he's going to be purple. Um, so opacity is very straightforward. Um, right on the layers panel on the upper right, there's um, an opacity percent. The lower the percent, the more transparent it is. Um, the more like a ghost it is. It's a, it's a ghost, and we should all be scared. Um, and in um, a similar area of Photoshop, there's um, the blending mode which is to the left of the opacity slider, and it shows a whole bunch of options that have a lot of weird names, um, like dissolve, and multiply, and vivid light, and difference. So 
It's, I actually don't know what all of them do. I know generally the kind of effects they have, but it's actually hard to pinpoint. What I will say is that it affects how, um, how it, the layer appears. So if you're, if you're thinking like this um, purple blob is a piece of purple construction paper, that'd be normal. You can't see through it, um, and it's just the flat color. If I choose multiply, you can see now that you can see some of the stars behind. Um, multiply is more like um, a piece of transparency paper, like on an overhead projector. It changes the material that the layer is made of, if that helps. So it's going from um, like a piece of thick card to a piece of vinyl. You know, it's it's the way that. It, the material affects the color, it affects um, how things look underneath it, and also affects how things are on top of it. Um, the best thing to do with uh, blending modes is to probably just highlight one of them and then go down the line, like just go down with the, <laughs> with the down arrow button, but look at all the crazy things that are happening. Some, some of them don't, seemingly, seemingly just make them disappear. Um, those are all the blending modes. Um, this is sort of what um, I think is best to do when you're finalizing a, a piece. Sort of like, okay, going down the shadows, going down, um, adding some light, adding some highlights. Um, yeah. Bill, that's that is a good um, that's a good comparison. It's sort of like coloring with a um, with like a Copic or an alcohol-based mm. marker. Yeah. Um, is every it just makes all the colors darker and it makes all the colors underneath it darker. Um, so those are layers. <laughs> um, we're blazing through. Well, we're already forty. We're already forty minutes in. There's so much to talk about. Um, Part two. Yeah. If, if people if people want a part two, we could we can conceivably do a part two. Um, I want to talk about brushes. Um, because brushes um, are I think a really like fun draw to making digital stuff. Um, I don't usually make my own brushes, but I think that um, it's they're really easy to make, um, and you can get them online, you can get literally an uncountable amount of brushes online. And I can show you because I have them. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's actually a pretty insane amount. These are all, um, this is, I actually got all these from one guy, his name is Kyle Webster, and he makes um, really fabulous Photoshop brushes. If you don't um, have CS6, don't buy good. them. <laughs> if you don't have CS6, don't buy them. Thankfully I only bought two $1 ones. <laughs> um, and they affect the brush tool which is right here, and it is a very complicated and all-encompassing tool um, that really only does one thing. It lays down color and pixels. It puts pixels on a layer. That's what the brush tool does. Um, and it can do it in lots of interesting ways. The default Photoshop brushes are pretty bad. They're terrible, actually. <laughs> and, Ra and Rachel uses them all the time. I don't know. I don't know why she does it that way because it is they are the worst. Because mine Photoshop can't use custom brushes. I bet they can, Rachel. You're just doing it wrong. I just have to make them myself. The yeah, she's doing it wrong. Any ones that I can download online that are for CS6 and up are compatible with my Photoshop. It makes me sad. It's very sad. So if you ever look up like free brush downloads, I can never get any of them. Um, this is what the this is what the default Photoshop brushes look like. Um, I'm going to go through, this is the default. Um, if you open the brush panel, which by default is um, on the, t this, is, this is a very, my panel layout um, is very similar to what the default is. Um, but if you think that you're missing any or you're going in Photoshop and you don't know where something is, um, everything is under window. This is where all the things are. So like brush panel is in window, um, the brush presets are in window, um, so if you're ever lost or can't find something, it's generally nested in there. So this is what a brush looks like. Um, right now we're on the default Photoshop brush, um, which is uh, uh, like a round, just a round circle. And when you click, it puts down that circle 
many times in a row to make a line. Um, here you got the sliders for size, um, which is self-explanatory. Um, this is, right underneath that is um, the angle that the brush image is set on. And right now we have it set as a simple circle, so it doesn't matter. Um, the hardness, which is below the size, um, controls the edge of the circle. So a hard brush has a very defined edge, whereas a soft brush has a very airbrushed-like edge. Um, and the airbrush edge is, um, is the same principle as the, as the hard edge. It's that it's taking a circle just with a, a feathery outside and putting it down many times in a row, which is what spacing is. This is the last option on the first page of the brush um, panel. So right now the spacing is set at 25%. Basically what that means is that um, it, Photoshop is taking a brush and putting down like a stamp of a circle and it's spaced out 25% of the circle. So the bigger the spacing percent, the larger the space between the circles of the brush. So a spacing of 176% um, means that your brush is basically just making a dotted line. Um, which is fine if you need a dotted line, but not super great if you want a nice smooth line um, that you make with your stylus that you are putting on your pad, your tablet pad, um, and drawing because you want to actually, you know, make a face or make a, a wall or make a person or make a squid. Um, so I set the spacing at 10%, pretty much on, on all the brushes that I use. Um, the benefit to spacing is it is less of a tax on your computer. Um, because if a brush has zero spacing, um, Photoshop needs to think very hard about every um, every stroke that you do. And that slows you down, and it makes Photoshop crash, and it makes your computer sad and overheat, which is bad. Um, yeah, yeah, Jenna it is like, okay, we have a circle brush. Time to make it not useless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the good guy. Yeah, that, 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 that's that's uh, all capital letters. Fuzzy in all capital letters. Oh, Fuzzy's Fair. definitely Jenna. So, yes. Oh, There's yeah. one that's mm, 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 and then one that's the good guy. <laughs> you uh, you obviously need to use the good guy. Yeah. I, uh, I've used him before. It actually is a pretty good guy. Yeah. Jenna makes really great brushes. Yeah, Jenna, uh, your fuzzy brush is my favorite. Yeah, Jenna, Jenna makes fabulous brushes. <laughs> Okay, so we have the spacing down. So now, it was, spacing was at 25%. Spacing at 10%, the line looks like this. It is imperceptible. Um, the smoothness. See, look at that. If you were drawing like a fun, um, you know, finished drawing, and suddenly you went to print it out, and your nice poster that you drew didn't have straight lines, they had weird scallop lines that looked like you were shaking when you drew it, you'd be very mad. And I have been very mad. Um, so spacing, 10%. <laughs> you're, you're killing Jenna. <laughs> um, Goodbye, Jenna. So if, you, um, if you're using a mouse um, or a trackpad, which I don't recommend, if you've invested in an art program, then you should probably get a tablet. But, using a trackpad to use a computer um, Yeah, you should probably get you know, a, a, a tablet. Um, then you're going to want probably to have so, uh, an experience somewhat like using a brush or using, um, <laughs> Bill, <yeah. laughs> Imper imperceptible to the lay person. I guess I should make a caveat to that. Um, I guess it also depends on what brush you're using because sometimes the spacing is way more apparent in certain, um, certain brushes than others. Um, anyway, you want um, a nice, a line that has some weight to it, some flow. You want, like, you're using a, um, an inking brush and you can taper at the ends. Um, that is called shape dynamics. Shape dynamics um, is going to connect with your tablet um, with the pressure sensitivity um, so that the harder you push on 
um, the pad, the larger the line is. Um, so, if you turn shape dynamics on with that little check mark, um, and set the control, which is the this drop down menu here, to pen pressure, then you can see um, you can see your preview of the brush. I can go from the thinnest with very light stroke to the thickest with a hard stroke back down to the thinnest. Um, you can mess with this in any number of ways. Um, I usually like to set my minimum diameter, um, which means the the smallest that the brush can get. I like to set that usually about 20% just because that's how I, I like to ink um, and draw so that I'm never getting a very, very small line. And if I need a very small line, I just change the brush size um, so that it's not quite so dramatic. But sometimes that's not how you want to ink and you want to have very tiny strokes. Um, and sometimes you just want a tiny bit of give, like you're using a micron or something, or a tech pen that really doesn't have a lot of weight difference to it. Um, so shape, that's shape dynamics. It's, that's the most important part, the most important one when you're making a brush, a simple brush. Um, and you can kind of see that there's a lot more, <laughs> more that you can do. Um, smoothing is always a good one to use. Um, and scattering, texture, texture and scattering are also good ones to use if you want like a more naturalistic brush. Um, but the rest of these get kind of nitty gritty and a little bit specific, like the color dynamics and um, the wet edges. I haven't played a lot, whole lot with those. So there's <laughs> an infinitesimal amount um, of, of ways you can customize these brushes, which is actually good because I don't make my own brushes, but it's good to edit brushes that you do download if that if that is your path like if i um i use um this belgian comics inker a whole bunch Boop. um but sometimes i don't like that it has a sort of rough textured edge and so i'll take that out um so it's good to know what the options are so that you can um play around with what you got to suit your needs because sometimes you're not going to want the same looking lines on everything that you do um, if, by mad chance, um, you want to make a brush, you can do that. Um, and making brushes works um, very similar, uh, very similarly to layer masks, where um, white space is going to be transparent and any shade of gray or black is going to put down a pixel. So. Um, I was hoping to make a quick brush right now. Um, so. Sam, pick up the beast. <laughs> I can sense Sam lurking behind me. <laughs> Someone's asking for the beat. Oh, am I in the screen? <laughs> yeah. <Hi>. Yes. <laughs> Sam is trying desperately to, <laughs> to clean the, the wreck of our office. <laughs> A hot mess right it now. Is, is, a, is a wreck. I don't know. Wait, can you see? Mm. We're taking <laughs> quick break so that you can see um, how many squishies are on our couch. I can't, I can't even. No, I can't yeah, even see. Yeah, you won't be able to see that they're all. In our and now I just piled them up so now we can't see out the windows. Yeah. Uh, well, the windows are, are covered up now. I, see, I got them as high as I could reach them. Yeah, you did it both sides. I got into like this level and then I was like, well, not bad. It's working around still. It's pretty good. Okay, well. <laughs> well. Sam, Sam can't clean on the stream anymore. I what? You can't clean on the stream anymore. I'm sorry. You're obviously distracting. I'm distraction. You are, you are distraction. <laughs> I am distraction. Everyone can clean on the stream. Sam, that's true. Sam can do whatever she wants on the stream. Right. Um, okay, so we're gonna make a, a brush real quick. Um, if anyone is curious on how to do it, so I made a um, I made a new canvas that's relatively small. I think it was like 300 pixels square, um, and you kind of let's say you want to do a nice clean inking brush, but with like a little bit of 
edge to it. Basically, any um, area that you cover um, the canvas in with black will um, be what's used in the in the brush in the shape of the brush. So you have you know this this nice circle with some ratty edges. Um, and you go to file. I think it's def not file. We woos. We woos. <laughs> is edit define brush preset, and then you can see the the shape of your canvas is suddenly going gone to that tiny little thumbnail. I'm gonna name this stream brush Uno. And then if you look in your brushes on this bottom here, I don't know if you can tell. Um, list. Stream brush Uno. And I made it very big. <laughs> That's sort of by accident. Um, and so now that you have the shape, you can kind of you can go in and edit it more. So okay, so I have stream brush Uno. I want shape dynamics, obviously, um, because I want it to um, fade in and out with the pen pressure. So test it out. It'll, uh, a lot of that jagged edgeness looks very artificial. There's a way you can fix that. Yes. <laughs> um, Yes. By going into scattering, um, you can have each individual part of the brush when you're um, drawing with it to jitter a bit so it's not in a perfectly straight line. So I put the scatter at 15%. Um, and now when I draw, um, it looks actually, that actually looks pretty good. It's a little bit more, there's some parts here um, that look a little fake, but it looks better than it was. Um, if you go back to shape dynamics, you can make that even better by affecting the angle jitter, which rotates um, the image of the brush back and forth. So let's set that to like 40%. That makes it even nicer. Ooh, look at that. Um, what else? Size, we make the size smaller so that I'm not totally covering everything. And um, maybe maybe I want the opacity to go down a little bit, so there's like a little uh, a little bit of like almost washness to it. Like oh, I'm using an ink wash. Ooh, I'm being fancy. Um, and that's controlled the same way as the shape dynamics, where um, you can set it to the pen pressure, so that the harder you push down, um, the darker it is, or the lighter you have the pen on, um, the lighter it is. And in like, you know, maybe five minutes, we have a pretty, a pretty confident looking ink brush. Okay, I could, I could work with that. Um, and then maybe, uh, you know, you're in the middle of drawing something and you realize that, oh, I don't actually want it um, to taper down that much. I should reduce the shape dynamics. And then you go in and edit it, or I want the, um, I want it to be a little bit bigger. Um, you go in and edit that. Hey, Tina. Uh, so it's really, uh, I think, one of the coolest parts of um, using Photoshop brushes is just how much you can um, mess with them, really. Uh, and even making your own uh, isn't, isn't a huge challenge. But then, of course, you get people that are really, really good at it. And you know, I have this um, pencil, box, pencil brush that I use all the time, and you can you know, shade with it, and it has a nice texture to it, and someone clearly spent um, a long, long time, you know, refining this just so that it felt really nice when you're drawing with it. Um, <clears throat> Thrill House, I want to make emojis so bad, I'm still figuring out how to do it. <laughs> um, okay, so that is um, making brushes. And it's actually, it's, it's worth noting um, that erasers work the same way. The erasers pull from the same pool of brushes that um, the brush pool does. So if you don't want something to have a very um, harsh erase, um, like a hard angle of pixels getting... Um, 
Um, then you can um, choose a different brush by going into the brush panel and saying, oh, I want, you know, a very soft eraser, or I want um, a square eraser. So you can do whatever you'd like with the eraser as well. Um, okay, so brush and eraser. Um, Tina and Kate, I know you're just joining us. We are doing um, a Photoshop crash course, a squishable crash course in Photoshop. Yeah, Jay, I, th I think um, getting partnered is what you need to do for um, the emoticons. But I think there's another way to do it. I, f I remember reading on a forum somewhere. Um, maybe, maybe I should just make them and then post them somewhere so that you can just download them and you can just attach them as images. You don't need emoji. You just send pings. We have to buy Twitch. We do need to buy all of Twitch, the whole Twitch. We can afford that. Yes. <laughs> okay, last thing um, I want to uh, cover before um, doing like a quick little cute drawing um, there is colors. And um, there are a couple of ways to manage colors in Photoshop, and I think they're all really helpful and they're not super clear. So. Um, I wanted to touch on that before uh, actually drawing something that, you know, is not just me talking about Photoshop. Um, so there is um, the color panel right here on the upper right on my screen. Um, that is where all of the colors come from. There are two colors. There's background color and a foreground color. Um, and you can switch between them um, by hitting the X key or by hitting this little flippy button um, in the corner of the swatches. <clears throat> um, if you pick a color, um, either in the hue, by going into the RGB, um, or going into the hue cube, um, it will change the foreground color. Um, and when you switch to the background color, the two swap, so you can effectively have two colors going at the same time. Um, but there are a lot of interesting ways to get to certain colors. So say you have, um, you know, you want a certain color palette. There's the swatches panel that isn't, um, it doesn't have sliders or a hue cube to actually pick colors on. It does have, um, it does have a history of the colors that you used, and it also has swatches that you can save. So this is a, a pre-selected number of swatches that are just the default. Um, but if I have this nice blue um, selected and I hit the new swatch button, it will um, add it to the library at the end. And you can save these um, in a whole, um, a whole list and Photoshop comes with a list. There's Pantone colors, there's um, basic colors, there's certain um, color spectrums that come included, but there are also custom ones. So if you have um, a piece that you are um, doing for one project that you want a limited color palette or you want to constantly refer back to colors um, quickly, you can save uh, a swatch panel um, in a list and go back to it whenever you want. It's very handy. Um, this is the color picker. I have the color picker mapped to a button because I use it all the time. Um, and it is like the, a, nice, a nice tool that combines um, the eyedropper tool, which is a separate, um, a separate tool on the left that will sample any color that your cursor hovers over. It combines that with um, a really nice color management system that actually I've only started using recently. So here's the the hue, um, but you have the um, these radio buttons that go down. This is the hue. This is the saturation um, selector. There's brightness selector, um, and then R, G, red, green, and blue um, based color selection methods that. Um, are kind of a cool way to um, 
land on new colors like i don't know if i would ever get this particular green if i just had to go in into this you know the hue cube and pick precisely the hue i want um so i have this mapped to h i think yeah, it's h so that i bring it up all the time um and this is also a way um to add colors to swatches easy because there's an add this nice add to swatches button right there um if you're building up a basic library um to start a piece, which is something that I recommend doing. Um, so that is the color picker. And the last thing that I should mention about color is um, the adjustment layer, hue and saturation. Uh, so a lot of ha times what happens when I'm, um, let me get an illustration here. Um, See, I told you to live with you. If I am, um, what? What are you talking about? Santula used to live with a guy named Hugh. Yeah, his name to live with a, a guy named Hugh, and his last name is Saturation. Is that was that what the joke that you're making? No, no, I oh, said just, I never met Saturation. Oh, oh mm -hmm. explain the joke. Gotcha. On, I, on Twitch. I missed it. I missed it entirely. Still not sure what's going on. It's not worth it. <laughs> um, okay, so what's the thing? A thing that I drew. Um, earlier. Okay, so say there's this little bear. This was in an email a while ago. I think it was in the Thanksgiving. Or not Thanksgiving. Oh, Valentine's Day email. Um, uh, there's so much talking. I can't hear myself think, Charles. <laughs> I see that bumble puss. Um, so say you have this little bear. Hmm? It's a bear. Um, and you're not super happy with uh, some colors that you picked. And um, you want it to be a little bit darker, or you want it to be a little bit lighter, or um, you want it to be blue instead. There's an easy way to do that um, if you add um, this adjustment layer, which is um, called hue and saturation, um, to um, your piece. And this is where clipping masks and layer masks come in really handy. Um, so, Say you had a hue and saturation, <laughs> hue and saturation layer above the sweet little bear, um, and I want it to be blue. Um, you can see me sliding the the hue to the left um, to make the pink bear blue, but it also is affecting everything else there. Um, you can very easily um, save that and then mask out um, all of the non-pink areas. Um, in this nice handy layer mask that's made. Um, so it doesn't affect everything else. So first I'm going to put a clipping mask on the sweet little bear so that now this hue and saturation layer only affects um, the sweet little bear illustration. Step one. Um, then if go into the layer mask, which remember was sort of like the putting pieces of paper down um, to cover up pieces of artwork, the same um, theory applies to adjustments adjustment layers. Um, if I just go in and select the areas that I want blue, like here, um, this is with the lasso tool. Um, I want this, his head to be blue. Um, and I fill that with white. See, on my little mask preview, um, I can see that there's a white section um, that is revealing the hue and saturation, so the blue is um, coming through on just the bear's fur, and it's not affecting the yellow bag, and it's not affecting these other pink limbs that um, I, I would change la later with a brush, maybe. Soup. Um, and so that way you're not having to go in and totally recolor in paintings if you shaded and if you've gotten like all of the values you want um, using a nice quick clipping mask with a, um, a layer adjustment 
is um, ways to edit large pieces of your um, large pieces of your drawing without needing to go into individual layers. Um, I see a spoof J um, asked about um, the. <laughs> actually, this is a challenge that we face literally uh, Me when every day. I switch between my two screens. Yeah, um, some colors appear one way on a screen and different on the other. Um, that is a tough, tough question <laughs> because screen calibration is part of it, but it's not just the screen calibration, it's also the Photoshop calibration. Um, and it's also the way that Adobe um, reads colors if you're using um, a PDF reader. There's v very strange things that can happen. Um, I know that I will make a PDF and I will it will look great on one screen and then I will send it in an email and someone will open it and be like, these colors look bad. And I'll look at it on their screen and I'll go back to my screen and it'll, it'll be changed on both. That's so weird. It's very strange. The short answer is there's no really good way to just quick fix it. Um, you, can, you can buy um, screen calibration yeah. equipment. Fancy things, as I call them. Um, yeah, literally fancy things. Um, so those are things, that, that it's a camera that you put on your screen um, and you plug it into your computer and the camera reads what color is being displayed on the monitor and feeds it back to the computer and the computer adjusts um, yeah, appropriately. It, I've never used one. I have. Very fancy. It is fancy. Um, but yeah, Bill, Bill is right. There's literally, <laughs> there's almost no way to make sure the colors are going to be 100% perfect the way that you want them across different computers and different mediums. Um, yeah, Chad, I can't imagine color correcting that. Yeah. Um, PDFs are dark magic. Use pings. They don't compress your um, files. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, I'm sorry, Thorhas, to be making you relive um, horrible things that I'm, sh that I'm sure we could all, like, we could all share horror stories. Um, Mm. And it's really annoying because obviously I'm drawing on the boutique side, yeah. not my monitor side. And I always have yeah, to that's like no good. Drag it over and be like, okay, what do you look like in the real world? Yeah, the throw house tiffs, tiffs are the, your best bet in terms of quality, but also they take up one million hard drives. <laughs> yeah, my files are already too much for that. Um, okay, so I think that I just like blazed through. Um, all of the like me talking at you that I wanted to do. Um, so I thought that the second half of the stream, which is just about where we're at, um, I would actually like do what I usually do on the stream, which is like sketch and then ink and then color, um, but also tr I'll try to like explain what I'm doing more and then incorporate some of the like um, more tricky techniques, quote unquote. So sort of like something to. Um, be able to take to, if you're interested in other tutorials, because there's people who are far more um, eloquent and tech savvy that have done cool um, Photoshop how-tos, and especially drawing how-tos um, on YouTube and other people on Twitch, um, but it's good to like have a base vocabulary for these things. Um, so, let's start with just like a sketch. So I always use this like fun pencil brush, but you actually don't need to use a pencil brush. We could just do um, the good old basic Photoshop brush. The one you insulted? The one that I insulted. We're going to make it that not right terrible, now. and then we're going to use it. I'm, I'm currently drawing a chicken nugget with it right now. So. Rachel is drawing a chicken nugget. Why are you drawing a chicken nugget? Um, why are you drawing a chicken nugget? It's going to be a squishable chicken nugget. Okay. Oh, it's going to be great. I believe you. Oh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, no one believes in just a yeah, chicken nugget. Really you should, you should give him a beak. Uh, oh, oh that's the worst. We're not going to actually make a chicken nugget. It would be the worst stuff ever. It would be a squishable brown lump. That's what this drawing looks like. <laughs> Thrillhouse, the the wonderful artist behind um, the bee in the sundress is our very own Jenna. Who is in the chat? Somewhere. 
somewhere Speak lurking. Speak. There she goes. <laughs> Chicken nuggets were put on my portfolio for a plane. What? I was not I informed that. of this. I just remember the Pomeranians. <laughs> they were amazing. I put smiley face on them and called it a happy meal. That wow, that is amazing. I can't believe that you never showed me that. Um, are those, are those somewhere? Can that be active, please? I possibly can. <laughs> Just go really far back. So we are going to draw a cute little kitty. <laughs> First, let's draw a horrible chicken nugget. <laughs> With a bite out of it. With a bite out of it. My chicken nugget is nice, okay? <laughs> I, I believe you, I guess. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why do Nightbot say that? What? Do I have to copy this one? Look at Nightbot. Why? Why did he say it like that? Why? Every single time. Did you think I was gone forever? I did think you were gone forever. <laughs> we tried. What a nightmare. <sighs> Is the thing also, that, like, Jenna. It's like an automated like robot thing, and like when people post blanks, it like knows what not. It's like no, don't do that. You and can't post blanks. Disabling it. You can. <laughs> you absolutely out. can. I was gonna say I posted the an imgur link. <laughs> that was weird. Last week. Uh, thank you for drawing the chicken nugget. <laughs> <Did you eat? laughs> my, what, why is your chicken so angry? So, I'm sad. Are you alright? Thank you for doing this. <laughs> this is what you've done. This is what the squishable chicken nugget will be. It's because we kept talking about Wendy. <laughs> um, also, Jenna, that um, URL is 110% broken. And, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, the, the police have been called. <laughs> we woos are coming back. We woos are coming. We Good thing this happened a lot in the streams when I wasn't here. <laughs> yes. So you thought I was gone forever. <laughs> Alright, so Again, this is just like using a simple, the basic Photoshop brush, doing like a sketch. You don't need any fancy brushes, and you don't need any yeah. fancy things. You, but I like them, so so no judgment either way. You insulted my favorite brush. <laughs> there you go. Also, something to note um, is I know that I was when I was learning Photoshop, um, it's really easy to get into your head about it and watch a million videos and try and memorize keyboard shortcuts and um, you just go through the menus endlessly. It's easiest to learn when you actually just go and do it and like come up with questions to answer um, yourself. Oh, oh. Oh. Why is it saying such weird things? <laughs> I don't know what about Nightbot, but this, uh, Jenna, this post is insane. <laughs> this is so good. Yeah, that's right. Meal. I do remember this. Happy meal. Happy meal. <laughs> so great. Those chicken, those chicken nugs. <laughs> Adorable. This is so oh, cute. Man -eater. Yeah, I these are also good. Are so cute. Those pom poms. <laughs> The little nubs. <laughs> There's a wide breadth of goodness covered there. Sam, you should be gone already. Sam is leaving us. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for noticing, okay. Philhouse. <laughs> <laughs> I've said breath like breath. five times, and I every single time I, I say it, I'm like, why do I keep saying breath? <laughs> With a D. Take a screenshot. I can't miss it huge. Hold on, I'm I'm thinking. So we don't torture you. I don't know how to draw cats. Oh god. I'm a mess today. Always. Yeah, how about that? Always. <laughs> this is um it's broken. This is Rachel's chicken nugget. Which is less oh. less horrifying than uh, than mine. You doubted my chicken nugget. I mean, it is definitely a chicken. It's also just a, like a weird brown blob. Yeah, because that's what chicken nuggets are. It's true. And that's what makes versatile chicken nuggets never <laughs> yeah, we talk. The sad piranha is legendary. I was just talking about the Zoe today. What, what is the uh. Yeah. Alright, so you have like a super rough, quick sketch. Bam. I'm going to try and continue to <laughs> talk through this drawing even when obsessing over chicken nuggets. I think we need to get chicken nuggets tomorrow for lunch. Done and done. Are you going to like order delivery for me to get chicken nuggets? <laughs> Send them to my house. If you want. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think chicken nuggets deliver to my house. I think you just need to come in for lunch. <laughs> Just come in for like 45 minutes and eat Wendy's. And yeah. Wendy's. I'm done with the city for lunch. Yeah, I was about to, Jay, you missed chicken nuggets. That's what you missed. Taco Bell what? chicken nuggets? What is that I didn't even know that's a thing. They're new. They like come with like a cheese dipping sauce. What? I don't believe you. I I will get you the links. That's crazy talk. Thank you. I think we can all agree that that's not necessary. It, it's not necessary, but they exist. All right, so you have a sketch, you turn down the opacity to 20%, suddenly um, you can draw over it and it's not a big deal. Okay, resume chicken nugget conversation. <laughs> I, I sent a, a BuzzFeed link to Jay's Instagram. Yeah. 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 All right, this is another, this is not the default brush, but it is a, a simple one. Just to give it a little bit of a different look. <laughs> Nug run with Jay. Same message leaving to get chicken nuggets. Yeah, that's actually what I said. Are you still here? Yes, I'm leaving. I took a picture of the squish ball for Snapchat if anybody wants to see. What a mess it is. Yeah, follow us on Snapchat to see what a mess our lives are. Sure for yourself. Santuli's everybody life is fine. But, everybody but Santuli has a mess of a life here. Oh, that is awesome. Thrillhouse says that the chat still loves you. Love you guys too. I'm gonna... Oh my. Anyway. Oh, thank you. <laughs> because it's clear that Pat has mixed feelings about you. Is it that obvious? <laughs> nerd. Ah, Pat loves me. Nerd. What a nerd. 
still hear you. Bye, everyone. Bye, Sam. Bye. You gonna mark? Uh, yeah. Goodbye. Bye. Good riddance. Just kidding. Have a good time. Whatever you're doing. Thank you. Isn't Sam kind of your boss? <laughs> she is my boss. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Don't forget it, Pat. <laughs> She was gone. We transitioned from nuggets to minimals. Yeah, the minimal, the big minimal hit. It's, it's going to be a thing. Essentially, has mixed feelings about it. What? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> not, not so mixed. Minimals are the talk of the town. I, I personally prefer chicken nuggets. <laughs> Because they are delicious. You judge me. And sometimes they're shaped like dinosaurs. You didn't draw a dinosaur shaped Neither chicken nugget. Neither did you. Yeah, but mine has a beak. Mine would have two. Plus, I already drew like eight dinosaurs today. Dinosaur <laughs> nuggets. Yeah, dinosaur nuggets are the superior nugget. What's a dinosaur nugget? It's a chicken nugget in the shape of a dinosaur. You've never had dinosaur like nuggets. An thing? Oh, okay. No, no, they're purposeful. The Museum of Natural History has them in the cafe. Like, Ooh. <laughs> that dinosaur nugget. And it's all a bunch of science. Science and then dinosaur nuggets. This sounds like a day. You heard it here first. I was not allowed. I never really had nuggets. Thank you. I'm sorry. Sorry, right. you're going to peel them. They're just the, the laziest. <laughs> like, they're very exciting as a child, and they're equally as exciting as an adult, surely because of how lazy you can be while making them. Or how much lazier you can be when you just go buy them. Either or. Are the nuggets made of. No, those are the very high end ones, <laughs> Jay. I don't know if I can afford real <laughs> dino meat <laughs> n nugs. <laughs> Although, dinosaurs are basically just big old chickens, so. It's true. They are base. Dinosaurs they basically are basically are chickens. All dinosaur nuggets because chickens are just dinosaurs. Hmm. Rachel makes an excellent point. I'm onto something. Chickens are dinosaurs, which means. <laughs> We're all eating dinosaurs. Jenna understands. <laughs> Jenna, was your mind blown yet? Mine was blown when I discovered that she's the one who made these brushes. I feel like chickens are superior beings. I don't know about that. Yeah, I think so. They're smarter than turkeys. They're very fluffy. Sometimes they have fancy feet. So they're they fancy. They're delicious. Outfits? Yeah. Sometimes they have fancy. They I'm love sure. hugs. And they're delicious. Yeah, but superior to the other dinosaurs. Well, I guess those all died, so. Even the chickens are superior. <laughs> <laughs> they're still around. Lucky, thank you. I'll be doing that the entire way home. I believe you. I believe that roosters scare the devil. Also, they're very <laughs> piercing. Also, a fun thing that you can do in Photoshop, um, when you are pressed for time, 
and only have a half hour left in the stream, <laughs> is cheat and copy and paste eyes that you don't want to draw twice. Yes. Notice how my layers have become more and more disheveled. <laughs> They had names once. I feel organized right now. My chicken nuggets had two layers. Two layers? I bet both of them are named. Well, one of them is named background, because oh. it's just the white default canvas. Oh. And then the same layer is layer one, which has the nugget on it. Well, I guess that's about as organized as you can get. Yeah. The song that, that is their true le that is the dinosaur's true legacy. It's okay, the other document I have open has like Okay. Can I print two things? Maybe they're in their little feet. These all spiraled into nuggets. There's not even a Wendy's at Penn State. I can't get nuggets. Bill, please post it. <laughs> I want to see. Oh, just be prepared. Nightbot is going to yell at you. Don't get scared away. Okay, so you have, now you have this, um, oh shit, I'm also gonna do the chicken nugget. <laughs> I'm gonna be really quick though, because I wanna get through color also. I leave, I leave this, um, this chicken nuggets tragic backstory up to you. <laughs> How did he get here? How did he get here? The Island of Dr. Moreau situation. Was he bit by one of his fellow beaked nuggets? He seems haggard. He, he seems truly <laughs> shaken. <laughs> I like that Jay called it an abomination. <laughs> Jay, you're not wrong. But the nugget is right here. <laughs> he hears you. He hears you. He's seen some squish. Yeah, he. This is what happens when you squish post all day. <laughs> He's seen some squish. I'm gonna start saying that. Your nugget looks like a Burger King nugget. <laughs> Specifically a BK nugget. <laughs> Those ridges, they look like BK nuggets. I know my nuggets. Rachel knows her nugs. <laughs> See, this one, I kind of based off of Wendy's nuggets. Yeah, a little bit more voluptuous. Yeah, and it's got that like golden, like warm tone to it. You know, it's very rich. Next week on Nugget Talk. <laughs> Next week on Nugget Talk. <laughs> Rachel and Pat talk. <laughs> talk about the intricacies of chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets. Their shapes and <laughs> the status of our economy. A oh, nugget talk. That's what Squishable Live is going to become. Our next stream is uh, just going to be us rating all the different fast food nuggets. Up next, fish sticks and things. F Ooh, Sancho is going to start a stream fish sticks and things. The wildly less popular but tangentially affiliated show about fish sticks. Trust the Gordon's fish, your man. <laughs> this stream is not sponsored. <laughs> no, but fish, fish sticks and stuff is sponsored. But... <laughs> oh, oh, you got a sponsorship? Yeah. Buh. Oh, this Nugget Man is great. I love it. I love <gasps> this Nugget Man arms. is great. Oh, wow. Who, great. Who's that? Um, the wonderful Bill posted that. It's intense, Bill. I love this Nugget Man, Bill. 
This Nugget yeah. Man is good. Nugget Man! <laughs> that Chicken Nugget is the size of this Nugget Man. I think he's bigger than him. I don't know. Uh, he could be crouched down really low. He could. That is the size of chicken nugget that is I want in my life. Is it considered a nugget if it's that big? Yeah. Yes! <laughs> okay, so now you transferred your weird, rough sketches into some passable line art. Congratulations. <laughs> Yay! We are going to use the things that we learned today to make coloring these as easy as possible. All right, so what this, this nugget needs to be a nice golden brown. Got to be just the perfect amount of seared, but not burned, baked, just so. So I'm, I'm not. I would usually go in and make sure that all of this looks nice and clean it up, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that today because the, the clock is ticking, people. <clears throat> and I'm also going to start naming these layers. This one is ink. Also, fun fact: you can turn layers different colors by right-clicking on them and saying, "I want that one to be red." Fascinating. It is fascinating, essentially. Thank you. Mm, the chicken this one's Color. Yeah. Maybe the popcorn chicken yes. counts as nuggets? Popcorn because chicken counts as nuggets. I want to say that they're basically just mini nuggets. They're very, very small nuggets. <laughs> Next time on Nugget Stream. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, we're going to just get fancy nuggets and we're going to eat them. We're just going to eat them on camera. But we're going to have like all the different ones and we're going to rate them and review we'll rate, them. We'll rate them. We're not going to draw though. We'll have a system. Um, who, what color should this cat be? Make it the pink kitty. But it can be an actual squishable so we'll be on topic. Alright. We'll make it pink. Very pretty. Very pretty. Everything can be a nugget if you believe, Jay. Oh, Jenna, get me Taco Bell. <laughs> Bring it to me. Is Jenna eating Taco Bell? Yes. That's, that's really not Jenna, very nice. Get on Jenna. the subway, get Taco Bell, and then come here. Possibly not in that order because I don't know where the nearest Taco Bell is and where the Penn Station is. Get out, get Taco Penn Bell. Station. Yeah, Jenna, can you just mail some? Yeah. See, like the only one. Yeah. There's, no, there's one that's connected to Pizza Hut. Oh, the combination Pizza Hut and Taco Pe Bell? The combination Pizza Hut and Taco Bell. <laughs> where, where is it, though? I don't know. <laughs> really right. there's it's also, by, I think it's by Union Square. There's there's also one on 8th. There is a, because I have definitely shamefully uh, Taco Bell myself. <laughs> shamefully. Shame, shamefully? Shamelessly. We're full of shame. <laughs> Same, Bill. Prison horse with poo brain. What? 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 Jay. What? You have to elaborate. Or? Find a prime. This has all the weird ones. Okay, so continuing with, with this illustration thing that we're doing, um, now I'm putting a layer on top of the base color. I should mark that base color. And then create a clipping mask on the layer on top. What? So that way, any color that I put down on this layer won't escape their outer, outside lines. Resume nugget talk. Excellent. I'm out of the nugget conversation. Oh. oh I, I want nuggets on my way home, but. Oh! Prison horse! White tiger, white tiger donkey. Of course. 
Oh. Um, th thank you, Jay. <laughs> I appreciate that greatly. I thought it came out really well. Prison or prison? Um, the prison horse. The, ze the zebra. Uh. <laughs> Rachel, can you get can you get Zebes? Yes, and see where he's been left off since he was mad. Um, for those of you not in the know, Prison Horse. Prison Horse is um, a new a new design we're trying out. Trying to like creep in, but I can't creep in. Can't <laughs> okay, my arms don't go that far. And he he does have a poo brain. <laughs> he's he's a little derpy. He is. I love him. Oh, this this fur is super nice. And he has a mohawk. Poo brain with a mohawk. Cool. Oh, you forgot to show his little nugs. They're oh, like nuggets. He has nugs. <laughs> his limbs are like nugs. <laughs> That's the content. Um, a, a good thing about doing the, doing coloring this way is like s separating out like base coat, then layering. Base coat as if you're painting a wall. As if you're painting a wall, and then layering colors on top of it, so you can erase without having to cut into other um, colors. Like I could erase the white of the eyes, and there'd be pink underneath as opposed to nothing. Great. Side notes. It's great because you can't color outside the line. Oh my god. Jenna, you visited, you visited real bird friend. Did they still love you? What? Did they still have um, mm. intense feelings for you? Because I would have probably adopted them on the spot. <laughs> this is sort of like an ice cream cat, like strawberry cat. Mm. Part of the open squish mashup. <laughs> yeah, mashup round. Mashup round. There's a lot of good mashups. I can see that. I gave some good scores. I, I won't tell. Oh, I'm an impartial judge. Hey, Pat. Yes. For for beginner digital artists and, yes. and Photoshoppers. Yes. What are the some of the like the easiest common mistakes we might make or should look out for? Ah, I'm really better at Ooh. ideating. I know I just threw this at you. Sorry. No, that's that's good. Um, I I think mistake is um, maybe um, not the best word. Yeah, maybe not the best word. I'd say in terms of mistakes, like like oops, like oh crap, mistakes. Not saving. Um, save as you go. Yeah, yeah, you gotta save as you go. Um, not saving. Drawing on the wrong layer, uh, which is the worst. Like if I'm. Flattening things. If I'm drawing something and I'm like super jazzed about it, and then I look over to my nice handy dandy layers panel, I realize that um, it has totally ruined the thing that was underneath it, and I can't undo it. No amount of control Z will fix it. No amount of control Z will fix it. <laughs> um, uh, that that hurts. So that be, hurts in be ways. aware of what layer you're working on. Yep. Um, be aware of of what order your layers are in. Um, because sometimes you'll put something in the wrong spot and it'll vanish and you'll forget about it. Like if you make an adjustment layer or if you make some, um, like a, a sketch and it is on top or below where it should, it could mess you up because the colors could mm -hmm. change. Um, uh, I don't know what version control is. Yeah, version it? control. Um, is that... Um, Clucky, when you say version control, do you mean um, like a progressive save, like Photoshop automatically making iterations of what you're working on, or am I not? Is that a thing? Um, is that a setting? That is a setting. Can actually. I turn that on? Because <laughs> <laughs> um, at home, um, I just save everything like progressively, like manually. So yeah. then I have like file one, file two, file eight. Um, file also, Bill, that's a very good point, and definitely more of a like art creation um, note that if you, it, it's very easy in Photoshop to undo, like just control Z. Um, and nice. goodbye. Bye stream. <laughs> <laughs> Walking in the background of you today. <laughs> Get some nuggets.
Yeah, I got some chicken nuggets. Um, uh, but sometimes when you make a line and you're not super happy with it, it's easier just to move on and not s sweat the very tiny details. Um, you could always go back and erase it later, but you know, just go, just do it, as opposed to uh, redoing one line 50 times. And I'm guilty of doing that, but I usually, I try and stop it like five times. <laughs> um, Clucky, yes. Um, so we don't here, um, because we have like a cloud file management system, um, it's definitely good to do um, if you're working on a Photoshop document for a long time. Like if you have a, a great amount of work that you're putting into one thing, uh, it's good to have backups of that throughout the process. So you could go back and um, see if an iteration, if something goes wrong, you can go back in iteration. Um, but I, I think for our purposes and my purposes, usually I'm not working on a Photoshop document for an extreme length of time here. So it's sort of like a, like a day long project. I'll do like a save as if I need another version and to send or to export or to keep in my back pocket. But I do that manually. What's up, Thrill House? Oh, oh, Jay, that's so that's so painful. You're not selling me on GIMP. I thought it was a pretty decent piece of software. You should try. Um, um, what's the other free one? I saw a free. It's like it was new and shiny. Uh, I'm gonna look it up before I turn this room off. Um, or I really can't. If you have um, a PC, I think it's PC only. Um, Clip Studio, which was formerly Manga Studio, it's so cheap. Um, I think it's like thirty dollars, and you own it. Um, it is a fabulous, fabulous drawing program. I, I use it at home a lot. Um, it's very smooth. Um, you don't need. There's like a basic version. You don't need all the bells and whistles of the, you know, the pro version, which is actually not even that much more expensive. But um, it really, I, I can't recommend it enough. Especially as an alternative to Photoshop, which can be very intense and expensive. So Photoshop used to have, you know, when you buy it once kind of method. Yeah. Um, back then you could get the student version for like $200, which, I mean, it's still $200, but you could be like, okay. It's, re it's more budget. reasonable. <laughs> you can budget for $200. But now, even if you have the student version, it's like, I think it's like 10 or $20 a month, depending on what you get. And then mm -hmm. once you graduate, you won't have the student version anymore anyway. Yeah, exactly. Whereas the old way, once you paid that $200, you had it. Forever. Yeah, <laughs> which is so nice. But you can't use custom versions. Um, paint, paint, tool, paint tool size is definitely good. I think it is um, probably... Um, paint tool size is a little bit lighter um, in, in terms of creating finished... Um, finished pieces. I think you need to might might need to work on it um, on a, something a little bit harder in Paint Tool Sci to get it to the same level. Um, but it does have layers. I've heard really good things about it. It's very blendy. It has, it has like a, a stabilizing brush like setting, which is really nice built into it. Yeah, this, the brush stabilization thing, so that your lines are smoother. Um, I find that to be a double-edged sword, though, because I used to use um, a line, a brush stabilizer, a lot um, to help make my lines um, not as jittery and I came to rely on it too much and then I couldn't make like a smooth line without it and so I stopped using it because I wanted to actually train my hand to not be stupid. I, I feel like my hands are too shaky to make really nice lines. I do that little, little silly exercises where you draw like a page full of circles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they would all just be weird old ways. <laughs> Um, and yeah, Bill, I, I, I will also endorse Sketchbook Pro um, as a drawing alternative because, uh, yeah, there, it's, I, I don't like it as much for um, line, line work, but in terms of sketching and coloring and, you know, like, especially planning stuff, it's very inexpensive and it is um, very powerful. It has layers and it has blending modes um, and different brushes and all that. 
Yeah, if GIMP, <laughs> GIMP sounds like a nightmare. Stop using that program. I, I used it when I was like 13 or something. Like, I remember it. Okay, we're gonna do another thing with this drawing that I do all the time. Um, there's one um, one setting um, in the layers panel that I forgot to mention. It's called alpha lock or lock transparent layer or lock transparent pixels. Is a tiny button, um, the first button under the lock setting, and when you click it, um, what happens is any um, any drawing that you do. Um, on that layer will only affect pixels. So if there's a blank area of a canvas, that won't be affected. So right here on my ink layer, the only thing that are on that's that's on the ink layer is the black lines. So if I wanted to, I alpha locked it, and I, now I can take a brush and go over the black lines with a brush and just change the color of the lines that I want without affecting anything else. Wow. Um, this is very handy. Um, because when I do lines um, and shadows and like opaque black ink things, I usually um, will do it all in black and then go back and change like the outlines to pink and then this outline to blue and you know go um, go actually into it and color correct after the fact without having to worry about redoing all lines. The other way that you could do this is create a clipping mask that creates another layer that. I, I'm bad at managing them anyway, so I don't really want to um, make it more difficult on myself. Bye, Jenna. Have a taco for me. Enjoy your bell. Um, so, like, I want this arm line to be pink, but I want to keep the little fing fingers black. So, just a quick brush stroke. <laughs> Um, and yeah, Bill, if I if I had, uh, going off of what Bill said, if I had one piece of advice to give myself when I was learning how to draw for the first time, I'd say to not use a pencil, because it's easy to focus on making one drawing perfect, when really you should just be making a ton of drawings. Hmm. Where do you stand on drawing something freehand uh, on paper and then scanning it? I know some people do that. Ah! Um, my my opinion. Yeah. Um, I think it is a totally fine thing to do. I think tons of people do it. I think a lot of a lot of comic book artists still do it, um, because it's. I think the allure of the um, coloring, the ease of coloring in Photoshop, um, not messing up, you know, a piece of mm. art, piece of line art. Um, but I think the limitation is that. Um, you need a nice scanner to get the resolution of the lines um, crisp enough because the hard part about doing this and doing that in Photoshop is removing all the white from the paper and preserving the just the lines just the lines because sometimes the Photoshop will eat away at the black lines uh. in in removing the white so you just need to be careful about doing that and um, know that you know you might need to be doing some cleanup work. Um, in Photoshop on the lines after the fact, so it's it's adding sure. another step. But if you if you are a pen and a pen or brush and paper person, then not a digital art native. Yes, is it is it is a a different sort of motor language to learn. <laughs> that makes sense. Drawing like looking at the screen and drawing down here. <laughs> or you could just. Get us antique, which solves everyone's problems. <laughs> it's the ones that like the, the screen. A pen display. Oh. It's like this, but there's a monitor on it. Yeah, the which the tablet thing. The um, the most probably the most expensive and most alluring thing that a digital artist can buy is this antique. When you That's want. Why you buy the least expensive one of When them. you want the your stylus like to grand. go right on the screen, and then you can draw on it. Do you have one? I have one. We both have one. But I have 
the like cheapest one that they sell. They have been making some crazy stuff. Wacom they're, has been making crazy ridiculous. stuff <laughs> recently. They have like fifty different Cintiq models. <laughs> They're all very expensive. Some of them are <laughs> I want them all. a little too ridiculously expensive. Yeah. If you are thinking of buying a Cintiq, heed my words. I don't know about the most recent, um, the most recent iterations of their um, Cintiq line, but they have um, the companion type models, which is like a pen computer. There's a it's a screen that you can draw on, but it's a standalone tablet, so there's a Windows PC built into it. Um, the problem with that is in two years when they make a new version of it, um, your computer is going to be obsolete, almost. Like, you know, it, you're, you're going to buy a computer, but it's very expensive, and the internals of the computer aren't going to last forever, whereas if you buy, if you have a computer that you, that you use and you buy a Cintiq, you can, you can always use that Cintiq. It's just a monitor. Um, and the ones with the computers inside are still a monitor, but and you could use them forever. But at the same time, you're going to spend a lot of money on um, a PC that you might, you might be able to get a better deal on elsewhere. Plus it's more expensive than the regular Cintiq. Yeah. So it, it's just it, you got to really um, want to use it on the go, I'd say, um, to justify. That's, that's what I've um, heard from people. Uh, and my own opinion is that it's it's great um, for if you really need something that can be useful on the go and at your desk. But if you're going to be doing most of your drawing at your desk, then it's probably not worth it. Or if you have a lot of money. Or if you have a lot of money, then it doesn't matter. Yeah, then just buy two. Then, but yeah, <laughs> screw it. Okay, so the lines have been corrected, um, except for this one. Soup. Um, so now the last couple minutes, I want to go through what you can do with the blending, um, blending modes and um, adjustment layers. So say you want to shadow, you want to shade this. I'm going to make another layer. Boop red so I can keep track of it. Um, you make another layer and let's just go back to the simple hard round brush. <laughs> Much to Rachel's delight. My brush. My boy. And I'm going to adjust it so that it's nice. Make spacing not 25. Make the spacing not 25. Okay. So the brush is clipped to um, the base color, so I can't color outside of the, the cat. Um, and say I want the sh shadows are usually cool, so I'm going to take the pink of the cat, make it a little cooler, make it a little darker, and do a, a rough shade. So like okay, shadow, shadow shadow. Boop. Probably going to spend more time doing this than I am on this. And then for the, make it a little bit more orangey. Okay, so the, you could probably just get away with doing this. Uh, nicer. You blend it a bit. Um, a really good way to do that, a good way to blend in Photoshop is um, combining the opacity of a brush with um, the eyedropper tool. Um, you have not missed much, Bill. It's all good. Um, so let's say you want to blend this, um, this darker orange into the nice lighter um, yellow coat. What you could do is turn on this button up here, which um, you could also do in the brush panel, because I think it was the transfer um, setting. Basically, that button means that the lighter you press, um, 
on your pen tablet, the darker or the lighter the um, color is. So it makes um, your brush stroke control opacity as well as um, brush size. And a good thing to do is so I have the darkest color selected. That was the eyedropper tool. And paint um, like a, a partially um, opaque line of that color over the color you're shading and keep doing that. And you get sort of like this nice rainbow effect. That's cool. Um, and then you can go in and make it smoother by continuing to sample um, colors until you get like a nice smooth gradient. A nice smoothie smooth. I think this is how Rachel does everything that she <laughs> draws. But I'm very like blobby with it. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm being very blobby with this cat coat. So, so you have this, um, this nice, these nice painted shadows over your kitty cat. Um, this is where I would go into the blend modes and say I want to go to multiply. Because multiply is like that transparent. It changes the material, quote unquote, of, to be more transparent. So basically it took the cooler purple color um, that we sh shaded the cat with and it um, layered itself over the base color of the cat. So now it's more of a, um, like a pink. It's closer to the original color than it is to the, um, the color that you shaded on originally. Um, and then I, I usually bring this down to maybe like 60% opacity. Um, and then a uh, little little hidden gem of the tools panel is the smudge tool. It basically just smudges um, with transparency whatever it touches. So I can smudge these shadows for a quick and dirty um, shading pass of the cat. Basically is doing what we, what we did with the uh, brush opacity. And, like a yeah, very slowly and very delicately, because otherwise you're going to ruin mm -hmm. your shadows. Like there's a lot of times when it, I feel like you can tell with like some Photoshop beginners that they rely a little too heavily on this much tool. Yeah, and it, and it is a good learning tool. It, it's good to learn how um, how opacity works because it does take um, the pixels that you laid down and it makes them less opaque but yeah it's it's very it has a very distinct pattern it, can get blurry. yeah it can get very blurry and really shadows have nice crisp edges a lot of the time so you just go in with your eraser oh all right i think i fit in everything that i wanted to <laughs> because it's seven <laughs> that's true you owe the people. I owe the people Another two minutes of entertainment. Um, all right, well, that was the Photoshop crash course. Wow. Yay. I hope that I made some sort of sense. Um, and I hope that this was helpful for those of you that um, are just sort of diving in. Um, <laughs> I guess you're right. I was, I was five minutes late. <laughs> but I want to go home, so sorry. Yeah, um, but... Yes, I hope this was a helpful thing. I hope this was a helpful video. We're going to post this on YouTube um, so you can go back to it. And if you have any questions, either you can comment there, you can ask us on Facebook, um, or ask during our next stream. Um, and we can totally uh, we can totally help you out there because um, Photoshop and making stuff digitally can be really hard. Um, but thankfully, there are resources out there. You just got to be pointed in the right direction. Um, Oh, uh, yay. I'm glad it was helpful. Um, you guys are the best, and also rock. And thank you for lending your words of wisdom, Bill. And, um, yeah, we'll see you, uh, we'll see you next week on uh, Squishable Life. Yeah. Bye. Goodbye. Good night. Goodbye. <clears throat> Look, Squishable.